about the Buddhist perspective on disease and human gene editing, which maybe give you some more uh, point of view upon the Buddhist perspective and also the gene editing. If you have a problem to understand me, please raise your hand. I, uh, okay? So in Buddhism, man and nature are interrelated and interdependent. One cannot separate one from another. As I think uh, John expressed that the same thing, but he questioned about his nature. But man is part of nature, and change is a factor that inherent in nature. And one of the Buddhist uh, reality that the, the, this, the Buddha discovered is the, the change of changeable all things. So man re, man's morality effect upon the change. The moral deterioration of man accelerates the process of change and are related also to human well-being and happiness. So whatever we do, effect upon the nature. And according to the sutra, Jakawati Nanda Sutra, the mutual the mutual interaction between man and nature. When man is full of grief, famine is the outcome. So the, the, this is, in, is a part of the sutra. Man is ignored. If man is ignored, then the epidemic is the result. When hatred is the driving force, violence is the outcome. But in Buddhism, after 2,500, we are right about around that area. The, according to the prediction that we will last until 5,000 somewhere and then everything will be solved. But before that time, uh, according to the sutra, we still have hope. Oh, how come that is not there? I mean, my, uh, my... It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> You turned on the video. Oh, you turned on the video, but you... There you go, you, you got the, the playing God, there he is. Are you playing God? Playing God. <laughs> Somebody is playing God. Um, or is that speaking of a devil? <laughs> Sorry. Um, what did you do? Something is happening to our computer system. Right. But even this did it show just now or it just if we are full of hatred, violence is the outcome, as you can see all over right now. And so the effect of the on the climate, right now we are full of uh, dusty fog around Bangkok. It means we've been using a lot of uh, uh, gasoline and other things that can hurt us because of our ignoring or whatever. And lately, I heard that uh, the big storm is coming up at the Midwest of uh, the United States. And anyone heard of that? It's coming up in a few, few days. Lance, Lance online. He's got it. Um. He's in Kansas. <laughs> We're in the storms, aren't we? Minus 45 degrees. Ah, oh, right. Exactly. Exactly. Hopefully, that's kind of be a reflection from your uh, leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, maybe <laughs> global warming. <laughs> The header of you have, that you have. Anyway, now, so, at least they believe that in the year before the 5,000, we hope that the future of man can reach to the point that we can recuperate back to the, to the normal and uh, be back again to the moral side of man. So at the present, I believe that all of us here are struggling through the immoral side of man. This will last for a few more <coughs> thousand years, and then we come back to the to the good point, good side. But it's not it's not that you lose all the hope, but there's the hope in the future when we realize that the the result of moral decline is with us, with us, and then we can change for the better. Now. Well, someone like Daryl who can help us to change for the better and uh, all of us around here will make a change. The interdependent of man and nature. Lily, Lily the Silva, the, the great Buddhist uh, of the Sri Lanka, 
she wrote about that man didn't live in harmony with nature, utilizing his resources for the satisfaction of his basic needs, such as bees, colleagues, pollen, from, from the flowers, not harming the natural world in which he lives. And at that point, when we have the good knowledge, reflection upon our relationship with nature, that we will not harm nature, but we will live with it. I hope, I hope we are not too far from that point because we are about the, at the end of the humanities, starting from the air, as you can see. Now, the Buddhism also also believe that the karma and rebirth. Karma, what is karma? Karma is one one's action that in the past affect upon the present and the future. So we are the total of our own karma, of our thoughts and deeds. We are responsible for our own mind and action. Some, some people in Thailand, they believe that they are just the result of the past and they don't observe what they are doing at the present because they, they can't think that they make up for the future. So, so if you believe in karma, it means that everything you do, every action that you take, one step ahead of you, you can, make, you can fall down or you can stand up. Depends all on you. Every single step of us, you have to be very careful. So samsara is another, uh, another interesting cycle that the Buddhist, Buddhism believe, that is the rebirth. Death is not the end of everything. Maybe it's the beginning of something else. So samsara is the end of the rebirth. After one step, there will be a new birth, a new existence, depends upon the state of mind of the person. And this is, uh, I often talk about uh, the how can we welcome death, how can uh, have we have the right to be born and the right to die, and all, all these things has something to do with the, the understanding of Buddhism. It means that every single step we make effect on man and the nature at all times. Not only one, it's more like a, a circle of string or a, of, like the wind, the air in this room bouncing to another atoms. It's all effect one another. <coughs> another belief in the Buddhism is that the law of the inter interdependent origination. This is a bit uh, difficult to understand, but uh, it's not that difficult. The principle, the, the key principle is, <coughs> is that all the phenomena arise in the independence upon the other phenomena. If this exists, then that exists. This is uh, one thing connected to another. But the root of all this is ignorance. Maybe some like the ancient Greeks believe that the, the, the most uh, important of human uh, lack of wisdom is ignorance. So the law of causality is that nothing exists on its own. It depends on another at all times. Everything is always consequence of something before. That is, the origin of everything is not unique. It is dependent upon a particular set of circumstances having happened. It is related to cause and effect. Everything is related and interconnected to everything else. So the Buddha saw the interdependence of all life and the cause and effect of action with the determined future. Now the basic law of Buddhism may, may, be, may be somewhat very much simply, similar, similar, similar to the five basic law of the Christianity, uh, that the, the Ten Commandments. Okay? Why and how Buddhists feel on life to live a moral life according to the Dharma, the five basic law. If one follows the five basic laws, you can live peacefully in the society. First, not to kill or refrain from harming living creature. When you not get sick, which is something very much when we are interested in the bioethics, we have to be healthy, we want to have a good life, we have to have a good death. Uh, all this interest in living creature in this present right now. So it means that if you kill or you harm anyone, you will have a very miserable life by getting sick or very unhealthy life. 
that is a result from killing or hurting some other being. For the second one, refrain from not taking what has been given or stealing, which means that one will live peacefully without being punished by law. And the third reform, refrain from sexual immortality, immorality, when we have a peaceful family life. Four, refrain from speaking falsely, then when we live in truthful society, no false information or misunderstanding in the society, like we are having now with all the lectures that we have in your mobile phone and in the internet, whatever. Because we never know what is the truth behind all this. Then the number fifth is that refrain from taking intoxicants. One can live peaceful and conscious at all times by not harming oneself or the other. So when you drink, it can hurt those around you and yourself at the same, the most. Now, if you look at a scientist's attitude, many times when we talk about science and you interview scientists, most of the time they don't know what they are doing. Because they believe that with all the experiment, they can have a better state of human being. And the scientists try to control everything, including nature. So man is the center of the world, not as part of nature or the universe. Well, this concept has been in this world since the discovery of uh, on many continents and many other. Mostly they blame it on the West, but now you can say that because the East is worse than the West are according to the Chinese or some other countries. In agriculture, to increase products and de decrease like insects. <laughs> some people try to kill cockroaches because they think that the cockroaches can harm them anyway. But they stay in this world before we born many, many, many thousand years. They can last till now. Uh, so the thing we, we, we disrupt everything on the natural surrounding. Now in medicine, we develop new genetic <coughs> cure for cancer and manage to inherit genetic disease. They try to do all those things. Animals, human beings are treated as a guinea pigs and we don't know whether they are love to be our experimental focus or not. Now look at the genome editing. Well, the group of technology try to give scientists ability to change an organism or DNA. This technology allows genetic material to be added, removed or alter in a particular location in the genome. Several approaches in the genome editing have been developed. CRISPR-Cas9, the process is cheap and efficient, that's what they claim, can be applied directly to embryo and, and uh, reduce the time required based on the use of embryonic stem cell. Some very much interesting, interesting. But if you look at the human embryo, what is a human embryo? The human embryos are human beings. According to one of the, uh, in this particular European Molecular Biology Organization, said that human embryos are indeed human beings and as such deserve a level of respect that is too incompatible with treating them as a disposable resource material. I think some of you have seen uh, a video they made on the needle. I tried to look at, I tried to find that video, but I can't. And they tried to bring that uh, needle to the, M, the one cell the M in the body. And the cell move away from the needle. It means it has conscious, it has the knowledge. So uh, according to this, the Buddhist attitude upon human embryo, what is that? Of course, compassion to all is important principle in our church. In all religions, we believe so. The unborn baby or embryo has the same status as an adult. The creation of life needs two elements. In Buddhism, we believe that the spiritual, the Nama, and the physical, the Rupa, the one is uh, immaterial, one is the material, are uh, interdependent and cannot survive without one another. The condition of the parent's state of mind are conscious effect upon the embryo. This is where I try to tell many people, if the father is in the state of awareness or being conscious at the moment of conception, 
then boy is full, fully received the intelligence from the father. And if the mother is fully aware of the moment, then boy is fully enriched by the beauty and health. So the state of mind of the parents are very important. <laughs> People should make a, a research on that, <laughs> whether or not that's true or not. And, but uh, uh, in many cases, I found that it's very true. Yeah? So uh, it's all have to do with the parents and the baby. That you can produce good citizen because the parent has a conscious mind, rather than drunkard or whatever. Now, Buddhism condemns also any use of human or non-human science sentence like biogenetics or others. That we should not treat other beings as an object or tools against their own wishes or aspiration, such as pigs, rats, and many other kinds of animals, or even human beings are used for experiment. First step, first precept the Buddha, not to harm and respect our life. Human embroil have to be respected cannot be used as a means of end, as they have life, feeling, and wanting to survive without getting hurt. That's the example I just gave you about the needle and the gene. Now, what we know about or doubt about the genome editing? Ellen Jorgensen talked about CRISPR, DNA, cutting, and replacing. She said that this, the result about such thing this also cannot answer and still in doubt. If we don't know that much about cell and virus to put in the CRISPR yet, we just guess. Okay, whether we cut this and then put in there or cut this and put in there. The experiment on CRISPR still have a long way to go and people mistook for something easy and cheap. There are many scientists being supported by many companies expecting to resolve that can change the new state of mankind. So it means that we hope that we're getting better. Are we getting better or not? I think the question that John pointed out is very important. Are we being driven by desire and profit of fame and future and fortune? These are the human greed behind all this. So we should question ourselves first. We should be very careful of experimenting both the outcome and effect upon the planet. But I think the guy in China probably being uh, arrested now, and maybe whether or not he will get out then is another question. That is, this is just a thing with a human being. Do we have the right to control evolution or of organism of our environment and our own organism? Buddhists stress the importance of knowledge to repress ignorance. The knowledge means to understand nature, not to control it. To understand nature and realize the three characteristics of all things through meditation. Well, without meditation, you cannot realize this characteristic, which is the sense of all things, everything all changing. Well, the, the modern physics also said the same. Heisenberg said unexpected uh, change that can happen at any time. You cannot expect anything around us. The suffering and the no self. These are the three characteristics that is in nature. This knowledge came from within. So to realize this knowledge, you have to go through meditation. When one's mind is still with the present, then one is able to realize the reality of all things. If one can develop the inner self peacefully through meditation, then sickness or disease cannot harm one as he or she can accept it as it comes and without any stress it is a fact of life that that is just a passing stage of life it's nothing to be fear of but it's just something you have to first understand and make it more meaningful while you're living which means we try not to change the environment but to know the inner self and understand what life is then we will live fully in harmony with nature not to change nature, but to live accordingly with nature, with peace of mind. We have no right to control nature, but to accept it. May I think about one of the poems that Mundri Mabishini wrote. Tell me where my limit lies, so I may go up to it. And not just so gently to show I'm human. Thank you.
Any questions? Yes, questions, please. Go ahead. Any questions or statements? So, is the Buddhist perspective any different to a Hindu perspective and different to a Christian no, perspective? I think, I think basically most of them are very similar. Compassion, Christianity, or have it. Hindu have the ideas of a part of nature, part of the one, the wholeness, uh -huh. and Buddhism believes that we are part of everything. Yes, please. So. What is the, so what would be the distinctive Buddhist perspective, unlike the familiar uh, aspects which are common also to Christianity, okay. Buddhism, yeah. Hinduism? Well, I think the mainstream of Buddhism that is so different from others, uh, the concept of Nirvana. Of? Nirvana. 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 Yeah, yes. Right, the enlightenment. Yes. And you ask where is the enlightenment goes? Where is it? In that? Where are we? That is a question you have to build it yourself. I mean. So, uh, if I could proceed with the question, uh, when we're talking about the concept of Nirvana or Nirvana yeah. or which, right. whichever, this is actually a concept of the human, which means that the human is not just that biological object uh -huh. which is. A, a biological object of the biological sciences, mm. but it has, uh, we have to look at it with a different perspective. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I, I assume that you consider yourself as a, uh, I don't know if it's a believer to be a Buddhist, uh, as a Buddhist. Yeah. Yeah, as a, uh, and being a Buddhist, in what ways would you look differently at, for example, medicine? Well, you mean medicine the effect upon the body? Uh, uh, medicine as a practice. Yeah, yeah. Medicine uh, as even as a, a profession. Mm -hmm. Well, the Buddhists don't, don't uh, go against any kind of medicine. We believe that if you can cure yourself at your best, that is good. There's nothing against it. Because it doesn't hurt anything, the nature or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, what you showed me just now about the Qigong, is that the, the Qigong? Yes. Right. And that is uh, one way for one to understand. Buddhism believes in any kind of exercise, <coughs> believe in any kind of... I, I, myself, my, my, I myself practice Qigong too. So I believe that it gives you health and strength to survive better. Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't hurt to do so. Yeah. Right. If I may continue one, one more sentence, it not only doesn't hurt because if I understand you correctly, it means that we do not uh, give uh, the medical profession the uh, the authority to determine exclusively what is health. Yeah. Um, did I understand yeah. you correctly? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, please. Other comments? Please, Angelica. A wonderful presentation um, regarding the concept of uh, karma and uh, nirvana. Uh, that reminded me of a concept, uh, principle of Newton, if I remember. For every reaction, there is an always an equal right. and opposite right. reaction. Right. So, uh, yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, maybe we, we, we just remind me of the modern physics mm -hmm. also, that the, there's nothing that you can expect in the next future, like the Heisenberg. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is uh, very, very much interested upon the mm -hmm. same as in Buddhism. And also David Hume is the closest one in the British empresses who talk about uh, no self. Because the concept of no self in Buddhism, not many people really understand. Because well, the Beatles said, all through the day, I need mine, I need mine. Everything is about ourselves, all the time. But we never, we never know that we are part of everything. Yes. And, it's, and it, when, when you come to that point, you come to the realization mm -hmm. that you live freely this life. Yes. Yeah. 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 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, Agus, please. Uh, yes. Yeah, according to the, the I uh, make a more simply uh, the concept of uh, genetic editing, it means that uh, the intervention of the manipulation is based on the gene. But we also understand about the epigenetic. So if we compare between gene and the environment of the gene, and the concept of Buddhism is uh, more uh, worth it if we intervene the gene or in the environment. Ah. You want to ask whether or not we should intervene the gene or the environment. We should set up a good environment. At first, the parents. The parents have to be in good, good mood when you are meeting one another. So the baby will turn out good. As I mentioned, if the father is uh, in conscious at the moment, he will have a very intelligent baby. But the other way around. If the father drunk hard, coming back, have no idea. Then you have, your baby cannot turn out to be good. Because at the moment the father is not in the conscious. And the same thing as a mother. When you are, we should be thank God that uh, everyone here have a good parents. Because we all look good, we are very healthy, and we are uh, very happy to live in this life and able to share to one another. Because the parents are good. So, for example, if uh, the head parents uh, have the autism, something like all the, the what we call the dis disabled child, mm -hmm. who is responsible for what we call the father? Uh, yeah, it, for for Buddhism, it it's, should be. It's a karma also. Ka or ah. Karma. Ah. you see, yeah, so in Buddhism, you say, wow, well, you can explain everything because you have the concept of karma, you have the concept of. Uh, uh, in, uh, in interrelation between everything, okay. but it's easy to have that the answer that you have no answer. Why this and that? Then you understand everything. In this way, is uh, helping one to accept life better rather than go against it. Thank you for. Okay, thank you, Chu Uh Yeah, hold on. I have a question. Yeah, Gala? You have a question? I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you.